Greetings, this is Greg. Can modern cars detect that they're on a dyno? If so, will tuned versions pull back power during a dyno pull? This Fiat 124 is sitting on a modern Dim Sport dyno. We don't have the official fan set up yet, but that little blue fan moves a surprising amount of air and will suffice for this video. This type of dyno is unique in that it has hydraulically connected and computer monitored front and rear rollers. This prevents the wheel speed sensors from detecting that it's on a dyno. There, you can see the exhaust fan. We have two others off camera. Outside the shop, you can see two giant fans that we'll be installing soon. They create enough airflow to simulate road speeds. This dyno has some unique capabilities, the most important of which is the computer-controlled hydraulic syncing of the rollers. Most all-wheel drive dynos allow the front and rear wheels to turn at slightly different speeds due to belt slippage. Some modern cars, specifically Italian cars, can detect that slippage and thus know they're on a dyno. That's not an issue here with the Dim Sport dyno. In addition to measuring power, this dyno can also simulate air resistance with specs from the car and be used to simulate a top speed run. It can simulate a hill or just about anything else the dyno operator puts in. That's Toby, my son-in-law. He's helping with the video today. We're going to do one dyno pull with front and rear rollers synced. Then one pull with only the rear rollers turning, so we can see what the car does. Now we're not specifically testing for power here, so the exact mods or testing conditions don't matter. What does matter is that these two runs are back to back with enough time in between the runs for the temperatures to even out. This car does have a tune on it because the question here is, Will a tuned car pull back power on the dyno? Let's find out. Now the car's on the dyno. We've got it in all-wheel drive linked mode. The rollers are synchronized, so they're spinning at the same speed, so the car will not detect that it's on the dyno. So far, everything looks good. No lights on on the dash. The car's in third gear. This is an automatic transmission car, by the way. The cable coming out by the door there is gathering OBD2 data. Uh, this dyno logs everything, which is great. There are some other ways you can do that. Notice we don't even have to open the hood. It, it knows engine RPM. Uh, it can do that also without OBD. It's kind of neat to be able to dyno these cars with the hood fully closed and latched and no wires going into it. I showed you the dyno screen for a second there just to show that the run is progressing. The numbers mean nothing while the dyno run is actually in progress. And the dyno run's done. It goes pretty quickly. The car's coasting down. We take a look. No lights on in the dash whatsoever. Um, that's a very good sign, and that's because the car cannot detect that it's on a dyno. What it actually sees when it detects that is a discrepancy in wheel speed sensors, so this dyno prevents that. So look at the dyno chart. Left side here, you got peak wheel torque of 228 or so, and one over to the right, peak wheel horsepower of, I'm going to say 191, 192. So high 220s, low 190s for... Uh, wheel torque and wheel power. Now we're doing the test just a few minutes later after everything's cooled back down but now we're in two-wheel drive mode. You see we're getting ready to start the test. Again the graph doesn't mean a thing while it's in this mode while it's uh, getting set up and, and uh, starting the test. You have to wait for it to be done. We start the test from 2000 RPM. That gives the turbo a good amount of time to spool up. But you can see the car is already very unhappy. Lots of warning lights on on the dash. It's just, it's not a happy camper. But will it pull power? That's the question. So starting the pull. And uh, again, it's going to go pretty quickly here. Rear wheels only, as you can see. And the run is over. So we will go and look at the screen again. Sorry I'm fumbling around here. I'm not Steven Spielberg. I'm just a guy holding a camera that knows a little bit about airplanes and automobiles. So we can take a look here and you see the red line is the dyno in two-wheel drive. The blue line is what you saw before. The numbers are drastically different. It's about 30 horsepower uh, difference in peak power and power up near red line is 50 or 60 horsepower difference. So the car pulls back power like crazy when it detects that it's on a dyno. And it does this over and over. This is not my first time doing this. I've, I've done it a number of times. 
and this test is 100% repeatable. I think this shows conclusively that the Magneti Morelli ECU in the Fiat 124 will pull power out like crazy if it detects that the car is on a dyno. Many other cars, including the Fiat 500 Abarth, Alfa Romeo 4C, and others, behave the same way. In this case, it's interesting that the horsepower curve in two-wheel drive mode is actually pretty close to stock. If someone dynoed their tuned 124 on a conventional dyno and didn't understand this issue, they might conclude that the tune didn't work. There are many dyno operators out there that don't yet understand this issue. In some cases, they're reluctant to understand and admit it. Some don't want to acknowledge that their expensive dyno in their shop isn't compatible with some newer cars. Soon, it probably won't be compatible with a lot of newer cars. At the time of this video, this type of dyno is rare in the United States. There are only two that I know of that are available for customer use. One is ours in Sepulpa, Oklahoma, and the other is Dim Sports in Ohio. But I suspect there'll be quite a few more soon. Thanks for watching my video. I'll answer any questions in the comments section below. Please like and subscribe. I do appreciate your views. Have a great day.